Please hit the thumbs up button to support my channel. Story 1 I am 45 male, my wife is 43. We got married in August 2005. About a year later, I had to go out of the country on business. One day, on the phone, wife told me she had invited a friend X for dinner to our apartment. I didn't think much of it, I knew the guy, and he appeared to be a decent sort of fellow. But for many years, I carried a hunch something happened that night. When asked about it after a few years, wife pretended she barely remembers the dinner invitation. Fast forward nine years to 2015, we are in a different country now. My wife was having an EA with another person why that hurt me very much. Wife did I see at that time for a few months. I have been living in pain all these six years. To address it, I began IC and MC now. It came out that X was actually her ex-boyfriend. My thought immediately went to that night 15 years ago. A few hours ago, she confessed that it was a ONS. The confession came after I promised her that there is no threat to our marriage no matter what truths come out. I intend to keep that promise and besides I have two small children. She has been 100% faithful the last six years, gave me full access to her email social media accounts. So, R is the only option forward. Right now, I don't even know how to describe my feelings. It is far more intense than what the EA caused six years ago. I don't know if it is grief, trauma, shock, or whatever. What do I do now in the next few days, few weeks, few months? For what it is worth, she is totally dejected as well. The only thing I asked so far is how many times it happened. She insists it happened only once after she became my wife. We have been living in a different country the last 11 years, so nothing happened between them during this time. Thanks everyone for the quick responses. I will read the book Cheating in a Nutshell. Some more info, we are originally from India, living in Canada since 2010. Mr. X and Mr. Y are both in India, so unlikely anything physical would have happened after 2010. I agree she is dejected not because of the betrayal itself, but because I now know. I guess the marriage is changed forever. I am changed forever. Wow, so many responses with different perspectives. Thank you everyone. Lots of questions for me arising from the fact that my original post is short on detail. Yes, the EA is fully understood. I have been given every single detail I asked for. I am suspicious too if the ONS was really a one-time thing or happened more than once. Hopefully I will learn in the days to come. Everyone has said that guaranteeing R was a mistake. Maybe it was, but behind this mistake is the changes that my wife has made. She has transformed herself into not just a loyal wife, but a loving and devoted soulmate. I have felt her love in the last six years in a way I had never felt in the ten years prior. I don't want to see divorce as a way of punishment for her infidelity, but more from the perspective of what's best for my happiness. From a point of zero trust in 2015, wayward wife has worked to becoming trustworthy. But her means living with the pain the ONS will bring again and again. I am seeing a counselor later this week. I don't know if we will get to the point of a versus D. At this point, I am just trying to get a handle on myself. Less than 48 hours since day. I couldn't get a minute of sleep the first night. But surprisingly woke up fresh. My appetite was low throughout the day. But interestingly, I felt thirsty a lot and drank three times the water that I would in a typical day. The only conversations I engaged with wayward wife are give me more details. I don't believe it was a one-time thing. Surely it happened more than once. She has maintained that it was only once as she felt guilty after the act. I don't believe her completely and preparing for more bitter truths to emerge. Slept well last night. I thought of the D versus R choice today. Both look like lose-lose options. It's not like what's the better choice, but which one is less bad? Comment, you were given all the details? From whom? Did you verify them, and, if so, how? Original poster, I am assuming you are talking of the EA that was discovered six years ago. Even though I discovered email conversations only, she told me about phone conversations on WhatsApp. Told me of two different numbers that he would call from. 
I remember WhatsApp voice calls were a new feature for that time and it matches the timeline. She had done everything for R, but I did not. It was to do my bit that I started ICMC and then this ONS revelation stuck out of the blue. Apparently, the counselor she met at that time knew of the ONS, but did not encourage her to come clean. If she did, I don't know where would I be today. Someone has asked why this relationship with X came out when I was trying to deal with the EA with Y. During MC, I asked Wayward Wife, were there any other relationships that you have not been honest to me about? She said she was involved with X for four to five months. They had gone to college together, but this relationship was many years later. There was a formal breakup and they have remained friends afterwards. I asked about any emotional physical connection with him after we got married. She denied it in front of the counselor. The next day when it was just the two of us, I recalled the dinner invitation and gently pressed on her and she broke down with the truth, I am sorry I betrayed you. No excuses offered, not even that pathetic moment of weakness. Have they remained in contact after this event? You see, there is my problem. She said they stopped talking for a while, but I know they resumed contact. I am using this point to get her to talk. She hasn't added anything to her story yet. We still have emails in her account going back to a couple of years after the night. The content of those emails, though, is innocuous, casual, friendly chat. Our first child was conceived about a year after this. I am going ahead with a paternity test. Her reaction is quite cool so far to this. I am thinking of asking her if she would be open to do a polygraph test. The ONS was a sin of opportunity. I wasn't with my wife. And his wife wasn't with him. I have considered telling OBS. But Wayward Wife and AP have many common friends. So, word will get out. If art is the way forward, it is a bad idea. But if I end up breaking my marriage, I might tell. Comment. Can we be clear on one thing? It's already been said, but needs emphasizing. If you do anything as stupid as changing the locks and denying her entry, you most likely are getting the cops to deal with her. Only it won't be the deal you think. The police do not even need a court order to enter a home where someone is legally a resident and asks them to enter, even if another legal residence is all huffing and puffing behind a locked door. In fact, they can remove said huffing and puffing resident for a number of reasons, ranging from hindering officers from doing their legal work to domestic abuse. You need to go even further back than 1996, maybe 1969 for this not to apply. As a cop in the late 80s and 90s, I arrested a fair number of husbands that thought they could change the locks. Only locks they saw were the ones at the county jail for a cooling off period. If you want her out of the house, you can ask her, and if she refuses, you can move out yourself. But you can't force someone to leave their legal residence. You promise to reconcile no matter what will come back and bite you no matter what. I am not suggesting you divorce. I get it from your posts that you want to reconcile. But if you reconcile with a feeling that you have no option and you are forced to remain in the marriage, then there really isn't any way you can ever let go of the resentment. You can't reconcile. Marriage is always a union of free choice. Same with her. If she thinks that no matter what you won't leave, then she has no incentive to do the really hard work of reconciliation. She can't be true to the marriage if she's still carrying secrets from her past. I am not suggesting you try to reconcile with the threat of divorce or even that you file for divorce. But it's important for you both to realize that the recent events and confessions are a great danger for your relationship. If you both understand the gravity of the situation, you both can really focus on reconciling. It's sort of like if you cut your finger on the edge of a sheet of paper. It hurts and it bleeds, but you won't bleed to death if you ignore the pain and blood for a minute or two before disinfecting and bandaging. If however you cut your pulse on a shred of glass, you would focus on stanching the blood because you know if you didn't it could kill you. It's that intensity that reconciliation requires. You and your wayward wife need to be very clear on that if you both don't commit 100% to or it won't work and the options are really clear, reconcile or divorce. Therefore, any commitment to or is linked to the mutual commitment and participation of both.
That commitment requires a plethora of things, but key amongst them is two, the truth and your willingness and acceptance to hear the truth. What this means is that if your wife has had two to three other lovers, or if she met O.M. four times, or whatever, she needs to tell you and you need to listen without freaking out and filing for D or whatever. Basically, you need to appreciate that you are getting the truth. What that means is that sometime soon, like within the next 30 days at a maximum, you need to have a feeling that you know everything of value regarding the affair. Everything that is required for you to evaluate if you can are or not. You can get that info with the intent of reconciling, but it's only when you have digested the info and the consequences that you can decide to try or not. Decide to try is the best you can offer and generally it suffices. Finally, I can promise you this, discovering they met twice for SX back then now will create pain. But that pain will be less than discovering a year from now that she looked up his Facebook page last November. By being truthful she shows you she can trust you, by keeping secrets she shows the opposite. Very helpful comments. Original poster, this morning, she came to me sobbing. Will you give me a chance? I will do anything to prove that I am worthy of you. I replied, okay, your chance starts now. Full story first. Wayward wife, I have already told you everything. There are no more secrets. Me, will you do a polygraph? Wayward wife, yes, anything. Me, only after the polygraph and our son's paternity test will we talk about the way forward. Thanks for the info on Polly. She is not denying that there was contact. But claiming that the contact was only like friends. The emails we have are during 2008 to 12. They are infrequent and the conversation is casual. Still, if there was genuine guilt after the ONS, even that shouldn't have happened. Story 2. I knew something was off. I confronted her on 11-14. She had changed her passwords, something we had previously shared, and had become very protective of her phone. I noticed that she quickly shut it off whenever I came into the room. I noticed that she had downloaded Signal, which is a private messaging app. She had started taking longer coming home from work, claiming that deliveries were late or those she worked with were being slow. She all but stopped messaging me during the day, and when she did write, it was short things about dinner or other trivial items. She started going grocery shopping alone, needed summer time, this is something we used to do together. She has always gone running after work and on weekends, but now with it getting too dark and cold, her running on the weekends have turned into three, four-hour events. She moved out onto the couch saying I moved around too much and she couldn't sleep. The couch then became the guest bedroom, that's when I finally confronted her. She said that she was texting the OM because he had been open about his mental health issues. She has struggled with anxiety and depression for a while, but we had it under better control with counseling and medication. She even initially told me she was going to talk to him, and because I knew him, he goes to our church and is our insurance guy, I foolishly thought that would be okay. On 11-14, I asked her if she still loved me, and she said yes, but she hasn't been happy for quite a while and it's been a difficult year and she wasn't sure if she wanted to work on the marriage or not. I told her that I noticed that she hit her phone any time I came into the room. That's when she told me who the OM was. She said that they texted and met sometimes for lunch, but he was just a friend. She said it over and over as I asked questions about him. I got angry and incredibly sad at the same time and told her that it ceased being just friends when she felt like she had to hide it from me. I asked if she talked about me to him. She said she did. I told her that her affair hurt almost as bad as if she had slept with him. Over the next few days, I just could shake the feeling that there was more going on than she told me. It's difficult because she says she doesn't want to work on the marriage. I looked at phone records and they call each other first thing in the morning and during most lunches, then again as soon as she gets off work. The phone call started on 1010, so at least a month. She doesn't text him because they use Signal and I don't have access to her phone, plus it deletes the messages as soon as you send them anyway. I talked to her again on Saturday and she said that they only talk and hug. I don't believe her, maybe it's because of the lies and the broken trust but I just feel like more is going on than she is telling me. 
She's currently in the process of finding a new place to live. She was going to wait until January, but I told her last night that I wouldn't be her plan B and that if she was waiting to move out to spare my feelings to not worry about that. She put a deposit on a place today during her lunch hour. In Virginia, we have to be separated for six months before we can divorce, as soon as she moves and that will start the separation time. I've left messages with a couple of attorneys this week, but because of the holiday, they are slow getting back to me. I think I want to split amicably if possible, but I also want to know how far she has taken it. I feel this need to know if it was just an EA or if it was a PA, does it really matter though? Do I push it where she doesn't want to work on our marriage or just let her go and move on with my life? We've been married for 18 years and luckily have no children. I just feel so lost right now, lightheaded and in a fog. I appreciate any advice. Thank you for the responses. We go to a Christian church. I have an appointment with the pastor on Sunday. I have not told anyone. I'm a very introverted person and it is difficult for me to open up to people. I haven't been in Virginia very long, so I don't have any friends here, but I will definitely be reaching out to my family. The guy is married, but they are currently separated, so I don't know how much she'll care. I've read a few of the posts here about it being important, and I'm trying to find her email address or phone number to let her know anyway. I am trying to get in touch with attorneys, and we'll see about some meds for the anxiety depression as well as an STD check. Yesterday being Thanksgiving was especially difficult, and I really appreciate all of the helpful comments, especially for the language to use that is a huge help. I have been thinking about what everyone is saying. Even though she is having that inappropriate relationship with the OM, I still want to part ways amicably and uncontested, no-fault divorce through mediation, which means we have to be separated for six months. Yes, I could file for divorce based on adultery in VA, but then I also have to definitively prove adultery. Hiring a PI and going through the court system is not appealing only to have a judge decide who gets what. From what I understand, adultery doesn't carry a lot of weight with the judges in this county, but even with a no-fault divorce, I can keep the adultery in my back pocket as leverage if I absolutely need to. I'm not looking to reconcile, I honestly don't know if I could, but I also don't want to drag her through the mud. I like what was said about telling only who I need to tell. For me, that would be my pastor, because I feel like I'll need the support or help finding new church because of them both being there, my family, friends, and the OMS. I could probably work on getting him fired, but again, I don't want this to become a heated divorce where we just try to screw each other over through lawyers. I'm trying to just stop talking to her and detach, ignore their relationship and focus on the divorce, it's just hard. Someone asked about my age and a bunch of other questions. I'm 41 and she is 39. We got married fairly young in college. Up until October, we would go hiking and bird watching together almost every Saturday or go out kayaking. We love the outdoors. We took a trip to Niagara Falls and a train ride through the Great Smoky Mountains and PR in September, two separate vacations. This really felt out of the blue for me. I have no idea how long she has actually been unhappy, according to her, a very long time. But as was mentioned, that could be the fog she is in rewriting our marriage history. In all honesty, I think I have moved past my need to know. Thank you again for helping me see that doesn't matter and focus on myself. Story 3 learned two months ago my wife of 45 years had a series of love affairs and one night stands 40 years ago. I was a brand new officer in the army, and she was finishing her college degree in the city where I was stationed. I never suspected anything and was not aware of her apparent discontent with me and our marriage. She went to a priest a few years afterwards who apparently advised her to bury it and move forward in secrecy with a pure life. I was devastated when she admitted her infidelity to me. But other than a few very clouded memories, she is unable to provide me hardly any answers to my questions. Because of the elapsed time and the life we forged as parents and successful professionals, I am trying my best to balance my anger, sadness, and surprise. Because she is unable to provide hardly any details, I am finding it very hard to totally forgive and move on. She confessed when I simply asked. I knew about an eight-month affair that occurred two years prior while I was mostly away from home. 
We had worked through the infidelity and I had forgiven her and moved on. Fast forward through 40 plus years and our relationship were never as close as it should have been but we had children and demanding professional careers that became our norm. Childhood abuse is certainly a factor in her behaviors at the time but keeping it a secret all these years is something else. Recently we both retired and started gaining a different level of intimacy and closeness a very deep, true love kind of thing that we had not experienced prior. One morning, while lying in bed, I told her I had questions about her affair when we were youngsters that I had never asked. She was empathetic and willing to talk candidly. We talked for an hour or so. Very healthy conversation. She was emotional, full of regret, and grateful we had made it through it. Then out of the blue I asked her were there others. I was shocked when she said yes. She was a bit evasive at first, but opened up that while at my first duty station and while she was completing her college degree, she had several affairs and a one-night stand. Besides admitting her unfaithfulness and taking responsibility for the very bad decisions, she had very little recollection. Knew a few first names, but none of the details, who, what, when, where, and mostly why. We're working through that now. She's willing to do a deep dive into our early lives to try to remember the details. So, I have reconstructed a six-year chronology that overlays where I was each year in the Army, where she was in school, major events in our lives, world events, hit songs, hit movies, etc., to help jog her memory. I also got a complete list of students from her alumni association for her to review. She got her transcript so we know exactly what classes she took and when. Later this month, we're visiting the military base in town, and we are going to visit the college, nearby landmarks, etc. I hope the chronology, review of college lists, and the trip down memory lane will enable her recall. Though 40 years ago, it's like yesterday to me. I've told her I want the details, I want the truth. Especially the why. Not trickle-down truth, but complete truth. And that if I do not get the truth, it could affect my ability to continue this newfound intimacy which we both want as we age. I do not know how I am going to feel if she doesn't recall the infidelities. I do not know how I am going to react if there were others throughout our marriage. Wife claims that when she graduated college and had our first child a year later, she overcame deep issues rooted in childhood soul abuse. Said she changed. To be honest, I find it hard she changed that much and didn't have periodic filings. She didn't seek counseling for the abuse until 10 years ago. In the meantime, who knows what went on? A.M. studying a lot. I will not be surprised. We'll have to deal with the truth. So much water under the bridge, but it feels fresh. I am going to walk her through the chronology and other info next week and give her reasonable time to remember. Afterwards, depending on how it goes, I have to figure out how to move forward. I hope there hasn't been any more since then, but I suspect there have been periodic filings. A.M. a bit scared of finding out. I check her phone, phone account, and bank records, occasionally. I need to see if she's downloaded any social media. She's not sophisticated with her iPhone, so I just some time to go through it. Hate doing it, I don't like being a sneak. Polygraph Though a sure way of determining the truth, if I am wrong in my suspicions, I don't know how we would regain our trust. I will consider it though, especially if I get some level of evidence of continued infidelity. The chronological walkthrough is my attempt to get her to remember sufficient details about the past for me to, at least, understand what it is I'm being asked to forgive. For now, it's two affairs with guys named Bill and John and a one-night stand doesn't remember their last names, anything about them, or any details of their relationship. Nothing other than the SX wasn't good SX and she always regretted it afterwards. Always complimentary towards me, she loved only me but can't explain why she cheated. These trysts while in college don't include the six-plus-month affair with a guy named Ken while I was away from home going to basic training, officer school, and a myriad of other short courses. Before she was able to finish college. I think she knows a lot more than she's telling me. I don't expect minute details. But I do expect something other than I can't remember. I've buried it like I have childhood trauma. 
I suspect there were other trysts during her college years, as well as afterwards, periodically throughout our marriage. I don't have evidence of such, but would be consistent with her behavior and needs as an adult who was probably still discontent with our marriage after having children. I also think she's trickled as much of the truth as she can face, which she thinks I need to know, or which she thinks I'll forgive. The irony is we have found a wonderful love and intimacy in retirement that we never had before. I hate to think it will be short-lived because of her revelation about the past. I am able to work through the past, no matter how bad, but to do so I expect the truth from her. I read all your messages and appreciate the comments and advice. Wife and I haven't broached the topic in a couple of weeks, but have been talking about it periodically for several months since she revealed the college trysts. She promised to think hard and try her best to recall the events. Said she thinks about it a lot and isn't ignoring me. She recognizes I need closure and that her decisions have caused my hurt as if it were yesterday. She knows about my chronology though she hasn't asked to look at it. Same with the class rosters, she knows I have them but hasn't asked to look at them. Having said all this, she hasn't once brought up the topic and mentioned anything she has recalled. It's hard not to be pissed. I am hurt and find myself getting angry. I am giving her this coming week and, if no discussion from her, I intend to bring it up and walk through the chronology with her. We are going back to the city where she cheated mid-July for two weeks. I am going to ask her to walk around the campus with me, including a nearby park where she and her classmate group hung out. Also going to ask her to take me to the locations where she met her various lovers. Many of you have suggested that too much information can create too much pain, but I have to go there. I'd rather know than not. Thanks for all the feedback. Some of it is pretty harsh, but I appreciate the candor, especially from where it's coming. Going to be a tough couple of weeks as we do a deep dive into our past. I am afraid of what I might learn that I don't know about our marriage, but no, I must. I am afraid she will clam up or not recall much. Given her history of child abuse, I know it's possible to bury events entirely. As for her infidelities and horrible decisions as a young 20-something, I have forgiven. So, I can forgive and I will forgive if she's truthful and sincerely wants to help me heal. I do not know how I am going to react if she isn't forthright. Short frustrating update. So, I walked her through the calendar timeline I developed for the time frame of her infidelities 40 years ago. She was receptive and felt overwhelmed. This didn't surprise me since it's four to five years that go back to her college years. She told me she'd walk through the calendars, family photos, transcripts, class rosters, our letters to each other, etc., and plethora of questions I posed to help her remember. That was a couple of weeks ago, and she hasn't done the homework. This is partly attributable to ten days with a flu-like illness. We're going back to our hometown the 1st of August to visit family. This is where the infidelities occurred and where I served my first army duty. I intend to visit the college with her and to go to the places where we lived and where she hung out while in college. I intend to leave her with her family overnight after the driving tour to force her to study the calendar timeline. This is becoming frustrating. Things are progressing slowly. She's dragging her feet. Mostly because it's shameful to her and, from her perspective, it happened when she was a different person 40 years ago and not who she's been since or is now. She's sincere about working through it together. But it's time. We will be in the same town next week. She's agreed to ride around and try to resurrect her memory. We'll see. Thanks for all the advice. I sincerely appreciate it. I don't think a polygraph is warranted yet. We're trying to work through this amicably. We've had a pretty decent 40 years together. Typical ups and downs. So, I need to try to positively resolve it with her. Having said that, I'm already considering options in the event we don't adequately address the infidelities. I need the whole truth regardless of how shameful it is for her. It may very well have continued for much longer than I am aware. Next week, while in our hometown, I'm forcing the discussion. You guys have been so helpful. Thanks, from the bottom of my heart. Wife surprised me by going to IC today. 
I have an appointment tomorrow. And couples counseling on Wednesday. This is a huge step forward. We'll keep the group updated. I'm optimistic. Short update. Drive around town didn't reap any benefits. Still no memory. We will continue MC and IC when we get back home next week. Wife is sincerely ashamed of her behavior and becomes emotional when facing her history. Talking about the details or addressing my questions is overwhelming to her emotionally. I feel like she knows much more than she's shared but is incapable of discussing. Counseling may bring it out. At some point, I will probably focus my counseling on forgiveness and moving on without the whole truth. For 40 years, she's been a good woman, wife, and mother. I'm not ready to give up on knowing the whole truth yet, but I do think that's where this could be headed. No offense, but a lie detector is out of the question. I know the major facts and infidelities already. Besides me obsessing and making her feel even more ashamed than she already does, I know what's to be gained. I think a lie detector is a marriage breaker I trust her so nothing to prove. I want the whole truth, but not at her expense. Having said that, I am hoping IC and MC will produce the whole truth. Thanks for the advice means a lot to me that you care enough to comment. A bit scared isn't the same as I don't want to know. Thanks for the comments and advice. I am definitely conflicted, but am hoping counseling will get me to a happy ending.